you, Tammy Sue Baker. Uh, yes. We are so thrilled to have Rick and Denise Renner back yes. with us. All yes, the way yes, from yes. Moscow. So exciting. This is so exciting to think that this is the great thing that came out of Can you know, we tape this live? Yeah, the between Moscow and the United the, and States. And that's the great, that's the silver lining, if you want to call it, yeah. that came out of that, the whole COVID thing is the Skyping. Yeah. And so we are so excited to have Rick and Denise with us. <laughs> or Skyping in has been the new way of doing television for almost every so show we out there. To- Praise God yes. in the good That's part. Right. Yes. But I have to Look say, Rick and good. De- Amen. I have to say, Rick and Denise, out of all the Skyping we've done with so many amazing guests, which you all love, is um, you, Rick and Denise, you have the most beautiful set of anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank no you. Thank you. It's Thank not a you. Skyping set. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is a studio. It is. It and is. I'm in my you're downstairs. The office. Yes. <laughs> yes. And in my old office here right. in the house. At the parsonage. And uh, doing yes. the, the, the show. And uh, I'm anxious to get back to our main studio. And oh, then I am too. I'm breaking ground with our staff for our new studio. And we're believing God for this yeah. studio. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be doing services almost every day of the year yes it, it's the place where people are going to come to learn yeah. absolutely i want to tell you something we were there yesterday scoping the the land you know really finding a, a place where we're going to break ground yeah. and andrew pointed out n- not realizing that you can see the prayer chapel mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. angle where we're going to be standing yeah so to un- to know that the prayer chapel is there it has been built and you supported it in knowing that there's prayer going on. Well, the prayer chapel's in the sky. Yes. Above. There it is. But that prayer chapel is in the sky uh, above the new studio. Yes, Absolutely. It so it's overlooking it the studio at the hilltop. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful, listen, I don't care what you got to do to get to Morningside this year. Do whatever you can. Get to Morningside. I believe that the agreement that we made, Maricela, when God spoke to you that we needed to march around Morningside, that was releasing you to yeah. come to Morningside and be a part of what's happening right now. I'm telling you, some of your prayers are going to be answered in the prayer chapel in the middle of the night. You have ordered us to keep it open. And I believe, Maricela claimed it yesterday as well, that there's some of you that are builders that are going to yeah. drive yeah. through the middle of the night to find God here at Morningside. So if you are called to build and you're called to do something great this year, drive in the middle of the night, do whatever it takes. 2021 is the testing of the supernatural. You never know. It's here at morning. I believe it's here at Morningside, knowing that you heard from God. You and mom drove through the grounds when there was nothing out there and you picked up the dirt. What did you say? You always said that, you know, you God speaks to you through the dirt and you felt that the land that we're in right now was a holy ground. And out of all the lands that we went and drove hours and hours and miles, Morningside was the land. And you saw the vision that people were to come to Morningside. I believe God wants us to do a lot of the finishing work at Morningside, yeah. even the chapel. I, I'd like you to march around the chapel Amen. this month. Yes, amen. You know, because there's just some finishing yes, parts of that. That's right. I'm carrying my mother and father with me, you know. Yeah. My mother and father have been with me ever since they died, practically. My, they were with my other brother for a while, and he went to heaven, so then he gave them, my mother and dad to me. And uh, my mother and dad are right up there. Yeah. I don't know if you can get any pictures, any cameras can move in this you studio. You want me to grab, grab them? But, yeah, go get mother Let's and dad. Uh, this is oh boy, this is really crazy, I know. Oh, boy, here we go. But, I can't even believe we're talking about well, this right now with Rick here, Renner on the dad. show. Oh. This is my, oh, and he's dusty. <laughs> oh, <it is laughs> get mother, too. Boy, he's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. Oh, your dad is heavier than mom. This is that- my father. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is my mother. And they're here in my studio all the time. And so there's mom and uh, my sister-in-law. 
She she always put <laughs> uh, big bows on them. Right. <laughs> she had bows for you. Yeah. She had, my dad loved plaids. Right. You know, he was kind of yes. like a plaid pant person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he, she, How but, cute. But uh, this is Fernia Baker, and this is Raleigh Baker here, I believe. This is Raleigh, no, this is and that's Fernia, yeah, and they called that, her Fern. Right and millions of you that went to PTL, millions of you, literally. They shook hands with, I guarantee you, a million people. Oh, sure. Wow. Absolutely, because they were at, they were there Every greeting show. people. Yeah. And that was what their job was greeting people. That's right. And that's what my dad did, especially. He was oh, the greeter. Oh, very much so. And was there. And so, but anyhow, uh, this is, you want to put him back? Yes. Because Absolutely. Hello, Mom It's and very Dad. sacred. But you know, the thing is, though, is that um, you were talking about you're going to build something. So my my goal, and I think we could do it this year, won't be that expensive, but build onto the chapel a wing. Mm -hmm. I know, right? It should go left, <laughs> left wing. <laughs> but anyway, left, because it would... When you go in the front doors, you could be to the mm -hmm, left, mm -hmm. and we could put a, a, a nice a, a, a mausoleum, mm -hmm. I would call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there would be just little places where you could put your loved ones who mm -hmm. were cremated, because there are so many people being cremated. It's really true. So pray about that. Let me know what you think. And... Uh, well, you need the completeness, and uh, Heritage USA was, you know, every year millions of people would come to Heritage USA, mm. and it was such an amazing thing, what God gave. Absolutely. And the the thing is, uh, Heritage USA was had seven restaurants. Wow. And it had facilities, prayer 24 hours a day. Mm. The beautiful upper room prayer chapel copied from the one in in Israel. Israel yeah. And so that is still there Yes, and still open. Mm. And the man who started me, gave me my start in the ministry, is buried right alongside of it. And that's the only way no really yeah. <laughs> they couldn't move a dead body. So they didn't know what to do. And so they didn't tear the building down. Wow. But they took most everything's torn down. There's a few things left. The, mm -hmm. the big barn auditorium is still there, and uh, Dale Hill redid that totally there. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big barn auditorium. That's been re redone totally. Mm -hmm. And so there's a church now that's meeting there, and uh, the upper room is. Still open. It sure is. Absolutely. And people being healed there and saved and go there all the time. Amen. But we would like to do that here. Mm -hmm. And so that could be, that's sort of on my list along. We could just build it with the leftovers from the studio that we're building because there's always a lot of lumber around and, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, to stay tuned to, you know, updates and what's happening, just go to jimbakershow.com and or ptlnetwork.com you can watch updates live and and listen we are broadcasting throughout the united states and even the world through the ptl network you can find us in your local cities just go to ptlnetwork.com and go to the channel listings and we have a whole plethora of states and channel listings on in your city, in your town, in your area, that you can find the PTL network and support the network right now. You can also find us and the brand new app that we launched several. We're liable about, to be in your home and don't your home town don't you don't even know it. Absolutely, and and find us there and listen. Right now, you can download the app. So if you have a iPhone or Android phone, you can download the app. PTL Network app, download it and watch on the go. Or if you want to watch us through, you know, the Roku device, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, download the PTL Network channel. And we are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all day, every day with brand new programming from people like our special guest today. Rick Renner has a, an amazing program yeah. that is the insights on the the on every book in the Greek. I mean, this man 
breaks it down in the Greek so it helps you understand the Bible, it helps you understand the amazing stories that we all have heard in Sunday school, but they come to life when Rick Renner explains it in the Greek. And that's just one of the programs that we're featuring there. And it's a very special time because I know you love Rick and you watch him. You have him on your channel, Guy. I walk into your bedroom and you're watching uh, Pastor Rick and learning from him. And what an amazing man, the fact that he's a part of the family of the Voice of the Prophets Network, which is the PTL Network. Amen. And we're just so happy to have Rick Renner and his wonderful wife back with us today. They're the founding pastor of the Moscow Good News Church. He is also the founder of Media Mirror, the first Christian television network established in the former USSR. Rick is the founder and president of Renner Ministries based in Oklahoma. He is the host of his daily TV, Rick Renner, now on the voice of the Prophets Network, our network, author of many books, including the best selling Sparkling Gems and the Last Day's Survival Guide. His latest book is Testing the Supernatural. Pastor Rick and his wife Denise live in minister in Moscow, along with the help of their sons and their committed leadership team. So we want to welcome them back to our program. Please welcome <laughs> Rick and Denise Renner. We're glad to be with you. And I want to say thank you for your network. You know, we can watch your network right here in Moscow because of Roku. I mean, who would have ever dreamed that we'd be watching your network in Moscow, Russia? Or who would have ever thought that we would be taking the teaching of the Bible from Moscow to the rest of the world? I mean, that is unthinkable. We have seen God do such a miracle in our time. And because of technology, we can speak to the world. And I just want to say thank you to you and... Lori, for what you're doing, for leading such an amazing work. And you have two great people on the set with you, Maricel and Monda. We think they are just great. And we want to say thank you to all of you for allowing me and Denise to be with you right now. Thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be with you. And we just love just seeing you guys. We miss you guys and we love you. Before we get back to your book, Testing the Supernatural, your brand new book, which is everyone should have it in their library. I want, I just wanted to ask you to fill people in because they all don't know you yet. Some of them just getting to know you and they love you like I do. Your, your, your new show is, your ratings are tremendous. And so we're just thrilled with it. And uh, you're, your TV program uh, is on daily on the Voice of the Prophets, and we're thrilled to have you with us on our network. But tell us, why did you go to Moscow? How did you get there? And how long have you been there? And uh, what's going on there now? Well, some friends talked me into a mission trip that I did not want to take in 1991, when this was still the Soviet Union. And I came here for 10 days to teach in the first Bible school in the history of the Soviet Union. And Brother Jim, when I stood up to teach, I opened my Bible, looked up to speak to that Bible school, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, welcome to your new home. I was shocked because I know the voice of God. And the whole time I taught that session, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, welcome to your new home. And I was looking around me, this broken, dilapidated country. I mean, at the very end of the Soviet Union, it had just totally fallen into disrepair. It hadn't always been that way. But at the end of the Soviet Union, it was a mess. There was deficits of toilet paper, butter, milk, sugar. You couldn't find anything in the store. There were bread lines. And now the Holy Spirit told me this was my new home. So I came home, worked up the nerve to finally tell Denise. And she said, well, Rick, I'm not excited today, but I will be when we get on that plane. And do you know, we ended up moving our whole family to the very heart of the Soviet Union. 
It is the best thing we ever did in our life. And we have been here 30 years. This is our 30th year. We thought maybe we were coming for one year, but you know, sometimes God has a way of tricking you into obedience. And he kind of tricked us to think it was a one-year commitment. And when we got here, we just fell in love. We fell in love with the Soviet Russian-speaking people. And God put it so deep in our hearts that we never left. And our three sons married Russian girls. We have eight Russian grandkids. And guess what? When we all get together like we just did for the holidays, there's no English spoken. It's all Russian spoken in our home. Who would have ever imagined that Ricky Renner from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, and Denise Renner from the little town of Miami, Oklahoma, that we would end up with our families living in Moscow, which is one of the biggest cities in the world. 22 million people live in Moscow. And this is where we thrive. We love it. And I just want to say to your viewers, don't believe everything you hear about Russia. Russia's doing good. God is moving in Russia. The church is emerging. The Protestant movement is getting stronger and stronger. This is our hour. Saints prayed for this. There were saints in the past who died waiting for this. They languished in prison praying for this. And today, we're standing in the fulfillment of their prayers. And for our family to be here, for me and Denise, for all of our sons, it is one of the greatest honors that God could have ever given us. And I'll just say to you, we очень люблю Россия. We very much love Russia. It's very deep in our hearts. So that's kind of our story. It is an amazing call of God that came into your life to, to go to Moscow and to have you content, raise this big family with all the children and grandchildren now. <laughs> Do you think your obedience of moving to Russia and building the church there, building schools, building ministry, has anything to do with the clarity of and and the acceptance your ministry has received worldwide? Could you answer a little bit of what I just asked about your obedience? You're moving to a land that in America, sometimes we have thought of Russia as being our adversary instead of our friends. And you have built a magnificent church there. You know, Denise and I were doing a large meeting in the United States, a big, big church. I don't want to tell you what church it was. And we were there for several days. And the place was packed out. And people said, wow, we've never heard the Bible taught like this. Well, when I hear that, it just thrills my heart because we're praying for a revival of the Bible. But that night, we went to the pastor's study. And we were sitting in the back room, and you won't believe what he said to me. He kept looking at me, and I said, can I ask you, what are you thinking? You're just staring at me. He said, Rick, you're like a dinosaur. I said, a dinosaur? What does that mean? He said, you're like perfectly preserved. He said, when you moved to Russia, you went there as that time when we believed in the Bible and believed in the movement of the Holy Ghost. And he said, unfortunately, the rest of us in the West, we've kind of drifted on to other things. And he said, you're like what we used to be. You're kind of like a dinosaur. Well, it was the first time in my life that I thought it might be a compliment to be called a dinosaur. But I really believe in a certain way, Brother Jim, that when we moved to Russia, it preserved our lives. You know, there's trends, the church in the West has changed so, so much. But God just put us somewhere where we could stick with what we believe. And that's what we've done. And I believe the answer for mankind is Jesus Christ and the Word of God. I just believe that. And it's so unfortunate that we're living in a day when the Western church has really drifted from the teaching of the Bible. There's good motivational preaching, and we need that. There's good inspirational preaching. And we need that. But people don't know the Bible. Because where there's not verse-by-verse verse teaching of the Scripture, 
you can skip a lot of things. When you do motivational and inspirational preaching, you can hit high mountaintops, but you don't get down into the valleys and cover every little verse in the Bible. And when you teach verse by verse, you really have the full counsel of God that's laid on the table. And Denise and I have never been more committed to the Bible than we are today. But we learned that when you obey, and Brother Jim and Laura, you know this is the truth. When you obey, your obedience works like a magnet. Obedience attracts blessing. Obedience attracts favor. Obedience attracts finances. It attracts everything you need to do the job. And when we moved here, <laughs> what were the odds that we would be able to build the first Christian television network in the Soviet Union? I mean, the odds were against us, but we got into a place of obedience and it just began to attract everything we needed, favor, the team, the finances, and God enabled us by his grace. And really, it really, really, really is the grace of God to do what nobody had ever done. We went where nobody had gone. I spoke to communist leaders that no one had ever spoke to and didn't even dare to speak to. And God just put such a grace on us. And door after door after door after door after door began to open until finally we had constructed a string of stations across 11 time zones, 11 time zones, where we were broadcasting the Word of God. And do you know, we came to a time, especially in the earlier years, today people use the internet, but in the earlier years, Brother Jim and Lori, we stopped counting the pieces of mail and we started counting the tons. It was coming in tons. We didn't even know what to do with it. And for years, I wouldn't let them destroy one letter because every letter was so precious to me. We had a whole warehouse that was just filled with mail that had come from Soviet people who were hearing the teaching of the Bible for the first time in their life. Every response was so precious to me and still is. But we learned that if you obey God, your obedience will attract everything you need to do the job. And you know that as well. You wow. know, we're so glad to call you our friends. And we are. Because you, you've we done love. an amazing work and we love your ministry. We do. We, we just absolutely love and this story, I'm, I'm glad we took time to tell a little bit of this yes. story because people need to hear what God has done. And this television, television's my heartbeat. Absolutely. And I, I, I've been a part of Christian television and starting Christian television. And, sure did. You know, seeing it go on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so excited that you have been a pioneer yes. of Christian television right. in Moscow. That's and exactly in Russia right. And all that part of the world. It's so, you know what, you know, what's amazing is Rick just said something that you say, uh, you know, often that you, you were prophesied over brother Phil Halverson. Yes. And he said that you would go where no man's ever gone. And that's what Rick, you just said that. And I was like, yeah. Oh my goodness. And Jim was 19 years old at the time. And that's when, of course, then mm -hmm. studying Christian television and all that. And you have gone, you and Denise have gone where no one has ever gone when it came to, you know, Russia. And so it's very And at very that moment, exciting. there was no Christian television. Yeah. At that particular moment, right. Halverson prophesied over me. That's right. That's right. So exciting. But I have to just go back to something that, Rick, you just said. You said about the Western church, church which is us, which, you know, you're in Russia or in America, and how we've slid away. We, you used the term better than I did, but. But the thing is, that's why this new book of yours, Testing the Supernatural, How to Biblically Test Dreams, Visions, Revelations, and Spiritual Manifestations, is so important because we just, I don't want to use the word backslid as, as, the, as the Western church, but we have, you know, fallen away in so many ways with so many false doctrines. And... So I guess you really are like a dinosaur, Rick, <laughs> and you, it, it's exactly what we used to be, Rick and Denise. You, you guys know that. Mm -hmm. You were born and raised here, and um, it's how the church used to be. 
what you're doing now. And yeah. we've got to get back to it here in the United States of America. We have to. We want to start where we left off yesterday. And I was asking, what are the forbidden ways to receive revelation? Mm -hmm. And we're, if we want to get back into the book, Rick, yes. if, you, oh if you want to bring us up to date on the book, this is so important of a book because it's telling us the testing of the supernatural, mm -hmm. the finding right from wrong and to not making errors in the last days. And what the Bible warns about the last days, we must live on what God says. So would you go on with uh, the book, Testing the Supernatural by Rick Renner? And you can get a copy of it for just $15. And uh, you can get three of the books. A $40 donation. You can receive three of the Testing the Supernatural books. And then we also have the Baker's Dozen. That's 13 of the Testing the Supernatural books. That's a $155 love gift to the ministry. Okay, so you guys at home there, you need to order this. We need truth. Amen. And we're trying to build libraries in people's homes. Yes. And uh, I'm going to have to buy some more bookcases because <laughs> this is how I built my libraries. That's, I have, a, I have so one of the... Good. Would you say I have one of the great libraries in America? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You got books. For a preacher's book. library? Absolutely. Great <laughs> books. Yeah. And I want you to have a magnificent Christian library Amen. that no matter what happens, even if the power goes out, right. you can read books yes. and hide the word of God mm -hmm. in your hearts. So, Rick, let's get back to testing the supernatural. Well, Brother Jim, I wrote this book because the Bible clearly prophesies that in the end of the age, some really weird things are going to happen and a lot of voices are going to emerge, some of them right, some of them wrong. And we need to be able to discern which ones are right and which ones are wrong. And we can figure that out if we know how to test them. But I wanna to read to you something very interesting that the Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter two, he was talking about the coming of Jesus. And he said that right before Jesus comes, some things would happen that would shake people up quite a bit. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as that the day of Christ is at hand, and let no man deceive you by any means. Well, I've translated that, the new translation that I'm working on, which is called the RIV. I want you to listen to what this verse literally means. Now, this is expanded, but man, this is really amazing. Listen to this. Some things will be happening right before Jesus' coming that could shake you up quite a bit. I'm referring to events that will be so dramatic they could leave your head spinning. Occurrences of such a serious nature that many people will end up feeling alarmed, panicked, intimidated, and unnerved. These events could put you on edge and make you feel apprehensive and insecure. And how I wish I could tell you these incidents were just going to be a one-shot deal, but when they finally get rolling, they're going to keep coming and coming one after another, and that's why you have to determine not to be shaken or moved by anything you see or hear. I also want to tell you not to be too surprised. Now listen to this. I also want to tell you not to be too surprised if people start making weird spiritual proclamations and off-the-wall utterances during the time just before the Lord comes, all kinds of strange things are going to happen during those days. That is a literal translation of that verse. And the Apostle Paul said, in that slither of time just before the Lord comes, a lot of weird spiritual proclamations, off-the-wall occurrences, bizarre things are going to happen, and they're going to happen even inside the church. And therefore, we need to know what to open ourselves to and what to say no to. It's just the age we live in. We're living in that time when two ages are pulling on us from both directions, 
Voices are speaking to us from the past. Voices are speaking to us from the future. And we're in the middle trying to figure out what God is saying to us. And sometimes it seems very confusing. And sometimes in that slither of times, some really weird things show up inside the church. Weird proclamations really is what Paul said. And we need to know to be able to judge, is this the Lord or is this the, a figment of somebody's imagination? And I don't believe we're supposed to be revelation police checking everybody out and, you know, just nitpicking on people all the time. I don't believe that. But we need to listen to our hearts and we need to use our heads. We need to use our heads. And if anybody ever says to you, well, you shouldn't question anything. Well, you should already question it because God gave you a head. And when you have a mind, especially if your mind is renewed in the word of God, you have the ability to see what's right and to see what's wrong. And if something is being taught that's bizarre and is wrong, you have the right to say, you know what? I don't buy that. I just don't buy that. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, we saw in the last program that the church of Ephesus really tested people who came through town. They didn't just say, praise God, brother, we're glad you're here. We receive anything you have to say. They tested them. They understood it was very important who you endorse and who you embrace. And so they tested people. And once they saw people were the bona fide deal, they embraced them, they endorsed them, they laid hands on them. But if they discovered somebody was off, they did not have admittance into their lives. And we have to be careful like that. Denise and I were just watching a program the other night on YouTube, and it was somebody who was claiming that, oh, they were claiming so many things. This, it was amazing to me. A person who, I believe people go to heaven. I don't have a problem with that. The Apostle Paul went to heaven. The Apostle John went to heaven. I know Brother Hagen went to heaven. A lot of people have been to heaven. But this person was telling this testimony. It sounded like they go to heaven more than they go to the grocery store. And the things they were telling, just so bizarre. And people shouting and clapping. And I said, Denise, this is about the worst nonsense I've ever heard in my life. And those people sitting in those chairs clapping and shouting don't know the Bible. If they knew the Bible, they would say, we're not eating this. Denise? You know, your spirit will, will warn you. Like I just said to Rick, I was watching that for just a few minutes. And I thought, this is almost a sham of the things that are so precious to me. Heaven, heaven is going to be precious to us. It's, it, 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 I mean, the Apostle Paul said he couldn't even speak about the things that were there. They were so either, either he didn't have vocabulary or he wasn't allowed to speak, but it was so, so precious. And, and I just think we have to be careful. And if our spirit says, you know what, I, I don't want to be critical, but for me, I can't watch that. And I think that our, the Spirit of God inside of us will bring a warning, and we should listen to it. And that's happened to me more than once, Rick, that, that I was watching something and thought, I'm not going to criticize that person, but I, I can't watch that. And, you know, I found that for me, there's four really important questions to ask. Number one, how did this person receive this new visitation or supernatural manifestation? Number two, what is the content? Does it line up with the Bible? If it doesn't line up with the Bible, you're finished with it. Let me tell you, God is not going to give you a revelation that contradicts the Bible. He's just not going to do that. Number three, what is the long-term fruit of that revelation? And number four, who does it glorify? And Brother Jim and Laura, you know through the years, people have told some amazing tales. Well, when people walk out of those meetings, what are they talking about? Are they talking about the tales? Are they talking about the angel? Are they talking about the vision? Or are they talking about Jesus? Who does it glorify? To me, that's the biggest thing of all. Even if you come to the book of Revelation, is there a revelation bigger or better than the book of Revelation? And how does it begin? The very first verse. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the focus of the book of Revelation. You walk away with Jesus more than anything else. 
And if a dream or a vision or a supernatural manifestation or a revelation really has heavenly origin, it will glorify Jesus Christ. That's the biggest test of all. What do wrong revelations open us up to? Well, they open you to error. In fact, we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 that wrong revelations come from seducing spirits. They're seducing. They lead you away. And in fact, you know what that word seducing means? It's the Greek word planel. The word planel describes one that begins to wander from his path. He was once walking on a well-worn, well-trodden path. In fact, he'd walked on that path for so long you could nearly blindfold him and he could walk on that path. It was so established. But the word seducing means something now has led him off the path. And now he's teetering on the edge of a very dangerous cliff and it was the same Greek word, the Greek word planeo, to describe an animal that lost its way. It wandered so far off track, it could never find its way back home. And that is what a false revelation or bad teaching will do. It will lead you away from the well-worn path of the Word of God and will put you on a cliff where dangerous things happen. And unfortunately, the people that are led off path Usually, they're very sincere. You know, you have to be very sincere to believe some crazy stuff. They're very sincere people. Don't question their sincerity. But you can be sincere and be misled. And we have to make sure our sincerity is connected to the common sense of the Bible. The Bible is the anchor. Should we seek dreams and visions? Is that a godly thing to do? Well, the, I mean, the Holy Spirit prophesied that in the end of the age, young men would have visions, old men would have dreams. So we need to expect divine visitations, absolutely. But wherever God is doing something, the devil also tries to get involved. You know, in the last program, Mondo asked a real important question. He said, what are some of the forbidden ways to receive revelation? It's an important question. And there are things that we all know are wrong. For example, in the Old Testament, we're told that we are not to practice sorcery. We're not to practice divination. We're not to practice tarot cards or looking into crystal balls. You know, my grandmother, Gertrude, she was such a precious woman, but she didn't know the Bible. She wanted to know the will of God for her life. And when she was a young woman, she used to go to a woman that had a crystal ball. She would say, Miss Wilson, please tell me the will of God for my life. My grandmother was very sincere, but she was sincerely wrong. That was wrong. And we have to make sure that we're listening to people that stick with Scripture. If it's not from the Bible, you need to be careful. You need to be careful because it could be the activity of seducing spirits. That doesn't mean you can't listen to prophecy. You should. This channel is for the voice of the prophets. We need to hear what the prophets have to say. But if you listen to a prophet that never uses the Bible, beware, beware. Because the Bible is the ultimate revelation. How does God speak most often? He speaks through the Scripture. He speaks through the Scripture. He speaks through the witness of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God speaks to us through our spiritual leaders. God will speak to us while we're sitting in church. And you listen to your pastor preach. Hopefully he's preaching the Bible. God will speak to you through the preaching of the Word of God. You know, if you look at what David wrote in Psalm 119, that whole chapter is about thy word, thy word. It's, it's your precepts. It's my commandment. David said, I'll hearken to the Word of God. It was the central fixture in his life. He said, your word have I hid in my heart. It's a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path that I may not sin against God. And David was a prophet. He was a prophet. But he knew that the scriptures were the primary way that God was going to speak into his life. Denise? Well, I'm just thinking how we just need to stick with the Word of God, that that is our, our stability, and, and that the Word, it will guide us, and it will, 
It will protect our heart. And you know, Proverbs says, in Proverbs chapter 4, it says, above all, guard your heart. So who's who's the one responsible there? Mm -hmm. It's us. We're supposed to guard our own heart. And so we take responsibility of, is this right what I'm hearing or is this wrong what I'm hearing? Does this make me want to draw close to Jesus, to win people to Jesus, to honor his presence more in my life, to be more loving, to be more forgiving, to do more for him? Or does this take me off in something else? Because if it's from God, it's going to draw us closer to him. And, you know, I believe this book, Testing the Supernatural, will really help people to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. But I want to read you something from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Listen to this. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Do you know why Paul wrote that? Because the church in Thessalonica was disappointed by false prophets. False prophets. They were working in Thessalonica. And the church in Thessalonica had been so burned by bad ministry that they said, hey, we've had enough of this prophecy business. We are done with it. And Paul wrote to them, and in the previous verse, he said, quench not the spirit. Then he said, despise not prophecy. The word despise means don't look down on it. Don't disdain it. It is legitimate. It is real. He says, prove all things, which means use your mind. Look at it before you embrace it and hold on to what is good. There's a lot of good supernatural ministry out there. We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We just need to be able to discern what's right, what's wrong, what we need to be careful of, and hold on to that which is really, really precious. You know, Brother Jim, I loved Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin was such a precious man. To me, he is the ideal example of a New Testament prophet. He moved in the gifts of the Spirit. He saw the glory of God. He had visions, even had a book called I Believe in Visions, but was rooted in the Word of God. And he said something amazing. He said, people seek the spectacular and they miss the supernatural. And people very often are seeking the spectacular, and they're missing the supernatural. We need to know how to see God in our daily life working in the supernatural and not all the time just be looking for the spectacular. I hope everybody will order at least one at least one of yes. this book because this is a necessary book in your library, and I know you don't have it because it's new. <laughs> and you need to put it in your library and uh, testing the supernatural. And it's, it's just giving you guidelines to know truth from fiction. And it's so important to know the Bible is truth. And uh, the thing that I love about Rick Renner's ministry is is he based it on the study of the Word, and he Amen. studies the foundation of the Word of God and the Greek and all the Hebrew, and he studies the Word. And that is so important, to know the Word, and you need to know it. And uh, another set of books that you can get today only yes. from us, you can get uh, The Last Day Survival Bible Guide. Guide. Right. And a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times and also the DVD, as you can see on the, the, the screen. And you receive both of those, the survival, Last Day Survival Guidebook and one DVD, which includes shipping and handling for $30 donation to the ministry. Rick, could you tell us about those two books, or well, the book and the, well, the DVD? Book, yeah. Well, Last Day Survival Guide is out of this world. It is off the charts. And I wrote that book before all this pandemic stuff started. But the Holy Spirit kept saying to me, people need to know how to survive what is coming. So I really dove into 2 Timothy chapter 3, exegeted every Greek word in that text, 
That verse, those verses are amazing. They are so relevant for the times that we're living in. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, this know also in the latter times, it says it's going to be perilous. That word perilous describes something filled with risk, something filled with danger. And the Bible says latter times, there it is, the Greek word eschatos. The Greek word which describes the last port you can stop at on a journey. So it's like the Holy Spirit says, when you've sailed to the last port, when there's no more time left for the prophetic journey, here is what's going to be taking place. And then in chapter three, he talks about what's going to happen in society. I know a lot of people, when they teach on prophecy, they talk about Israel and they talk about the Middle East. I don't do that. I really deal with what the Holy Spirit said is going to be happening in the world around all of us. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he describes in the most vivid detail everything we're seeing today. My friends, we have sailed to the last port. We really are at the end of this prophetic journey. We are. And another sign that Jesus gave, Matthew 24, verse 4, he said, one of the signs that you've come to the very end of the age will be worldwide deception and even deception that tries to get inside the church. Delusion. And really, Jim and Lori, we're living in the age of delusion. This is a delusional age where people no longer believe science. They no longer belong, believe in facts. There's such delusion. Men think they're women. Women think that they're men. We're living in the age of delusion just like Isaiah 5.20 says, when men call light darkness and darkness light, such confusion. And society at large, the Bible says, will become reprobate. Well, people hear that word reprobate and they think that just means they're crazy or they're just evil. But the word reprobate, it really describes a damaged mind, a mind that is so ill-affected that it can no longer make sense of what is right and what is wrong. That's what the word reprobate means. And today we're living in an age when people really believe wrong is right. And they really believe that right is wrong. That is the sign of a reprobate society. Mental confusion, moral confusion. We're living in the age of delusion and reprobate. That's what I deal with in Last Day's Survival Guide. And what's so powerful about that book is I give practical action steps about how to protect yourself and how to protect your family, your kids, your grandkids, so you're not affected by the spirit of the age that we have all around us today. That is a great book. It is a great, Rick, it is a great book. I, Kimberly, our producer, who's sitting right, right back here, her... We talk about this book all the time and how we have it right next to our bedsides. And it is just so powerful. So thank you for writing this. Everybody should get a copy of this and the DVD for um, do for $30 donation to the ministry. At least one. I would get, get this. get the video and the. Correct. Yes. Big, massive book. It is. I would get one. I would get one of these for your pastor. I would do that if you could for yourself first. I would. This is the way to start a new year. I'll tell you that. It is. Yeah. It is. It's so you, exciting. You really ought to think about ordering this whole set today. Yeah. Be sure to get testing the supernatural because you need to know. You need to be informed. You need to be intelligent. Yes. Of the Word of God, and don't. Oh my God, the Bible warns of. False, you know, false miracles yes. Yes. in the last days. Right. So you don't need to know testing the supernatural. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anybody ever writing a book like this. Mm -hmm. This is a powerful, powerful book. And uh, it's only a $15 book. And how to biblically test dream, visions, revelations, spiritual manifestations. Mm -hmm. You must know bases the foundation from the word of the living god amen what should be the biblical fruit of an authentic dream vision or supernatural manifestation 
I'm glad you asked that question. I cover that in this book. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, listen to what Paul says. This is an amazing verse. Verse 3, he says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. The word fables is the Greek word muthos. It's the word mythology, which means sometimes what te people teach and preach is closer to fairy tales and mythology than it is to biblical truth. And then he says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogy. And here's what it does. If it's bad teaching, it just ministers questions. It never really satisfies your spiritual need. It just puts you on a treadmill trying to find more and more and more and more. But good teaching, he says, brings godly edifying, which is an architectural term, which really means when you hear good teaching, it puts another brick in your wall. It adds something concrete to your life. You can build on top of it. You don't walk out wondering, what does that mean? What do I do with that? But good teaching, it adds a brick to your wall. It really adds something to you. And then he says in verse 5, now the end of the commandment, the word end, the Greek word telos, the ultimate aim of the commandment or of teaching or good ministry is, here it is, love out of a pure heart, out of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned. The word pure is the Greek word katharizo. It's where you get the medical term for a catheter. Well, if you're in the hospital and you can't get up and go to the bathroom, they catheterize you. The catheterization of your body takes the poisons out of your body. And this verse literally means when you're listening to something that's really good for you, it will catheterize your heart. God will deal with you at the core of your being. You will not always enjoy it, but it will absolutely pull the toxins out of your soul, out of your spirit, out of your life. Then he says, a good conscience. A good conscience is the Greek word synesis. It describes a pulling together of all the pieces. It enables you to see the full will of God where you can really see God's plan for your life. And then he says, faith unfeigned or a real faith. And then he says in verse 6, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. The word swerve, the Greek word astrocheo, means they never really had their eyes set on the right bullseye. So they just wander all the time. We need to be locked in on the person of Jesus, locked in on the teaching of the Bible. And by the way, if Jesus and the Bible is your aim, you'll have a lot of spectacular experiences. God will visit you with the supernatural. But we have to make sure we don't swerve from that which is the most important. And that's why I wrote this book, Testing the Supernatural. Will you pray for our people tonight, right now, pray for the people watching, that they will have discernment, that they will be filled with wisdom. And uh, I, I'm praying you'll order these books. Yes. Yeah. And study, yeah. so you'll be a workman not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. For, pray for us that we'll be diligent. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, we pray for a revival of the Bible, that people will return to the word of God, that it would be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Thank you for coming by. Oh, wow. I can't believe we don't have time for more questions. We have so many questions, but you can you all the questions are answered in right. this little but mighty powerful book and also the Last Day Survival Guide book and DVD. So I love this um, Testing the Supernatural. You can receive the Baker's Dozen for uh, that's 13. For a $155 donation to the ministry, which includes shipping and handling, or you can get one book for $15, and that includes shipping and handling, or you can go with the friends and family offer, I, I, I like to call it, but you can go um, with the three books for $40 to the ministry donation, and you can write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615, or call us right now at 1-888-988-1588. And go to the website is a great thing to do as well, Jim Baker Show.
com and the last day survival guide along with the dvd that is for a, a donation to the ministry of thirty dollars and i like to say or more if the lord should lead you or more and that's and, a bargain and that oh for this book and this dvd yes you need somebody to help you carry it home <laughs> it is big i love it, it. Is, from the last I heard, it's it's one of the best sellers right now. It's excellent. It's literally excellent. There's no, I don't know. It's it's just the best. It's stellar. It's excellent. It's you will learn so much from this. Yeah. Book. Rick, is that is? Have you heard that you, this book is a, a is a bestseller right now? I've I've heard this from different places. It's been on the bestseller list for about five months. Yeah. I wow. I, yeah. Woo. Yeah. So you need to get this this one if you don't have it. The last day survival guide. And it's a different survival guide than you've read because it's more about spiritually surviving, it is. but it's how to survive. That's right. God's and way. these last of the last days, I love how you explained this today, Rick, when you talked about we are really in the last of the last days and and how you talked about just that little, we're at that little sliver. Oh my goodness, we are there. It's really something. Well, it's delightful to have Rick and Denise. And I, I, I don't know why we just, when Denise, when you come, would you just plan to sing? Yes. I, I always want to hear her Denise sing. Denise is an absolutely. One of the great singers. Beautiful of, and, uh, opera singer. She is, oh my and anointed, <laughs> anointed, that anointing on you. And everything you've had to say, Denise, has ministered to me personally so much. So thank you. Yes. We, we appreciate you both being here with us so very, very much. We have to say goodbye because our time is up. But it's been great to be with you. And don't miss Rick and Denise Renner on our network. Go online. You find... You can find the exact time and station right. if you go to jimbakershow.com. That's okay? right. That's right. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today.